Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome back to another A Beginner's Guide to this time we are looking at Single Strike Lugia. This deck isn't a huge amount different from Colorless Lugia. If you have seen that video, this might be a bit familiar, but we'll go through it again because some people might only care about Single Strike Lugia. Understandable, it's probably the better one in the format currently. Uh, so this list is a very simple one. There's definitely room for uh, changes in this deck. I will go through them in a minute, but we'll start off with what we always go with. Of course, we start off with Lugia, uh, Lugia V. Maybe not the most important card, but sometimes you do need to play this card uh, and use one of its attacks. Read the Wind, discard a card from your hand. If you do, draw three cards. This deck is all about discarding Pokemon. I'll explain why. Because you're using Lugia V-Star. Lugia V-Star has the Summoning Star V-Star power. During your turn, you may put up to two colorless Pokemon that don't have a rule box from your discard pile onto your bench. Which two Pokemon are you wanting in this deck? Let me show you in just a second. First of all, let's just look at the Tempest Dive attack real quick. Tempest Dive for four colorless, 220 damage. You may discard a stadium in play. Very handy if your opponents throw down a Path to the Peak and you would like to play a Luminion next turn. So I mentioned earlier, we're discarding Pokemon. We're bringing them back with Summoning Star. What Pokemon are we bringing back? It is, of course, Archeops. Archeops has the ability Primal Turbo. Once during your turn, you may search your deck for up to two special energy cards and attach them to one of your Pokemon, then shuffle your deck. And you want two of these on the board, so you can have four special energy search from the deck, as well as your manual attachment. Every turn, you are attaching at least five energy to your Pokemon. It is fantastic when it works. <laughs> when it works. So, what Pokemon are we looking at powering up? Well, this is the Single Strike build, so we are looking at Single Strike Pokemon. The main attacker is Tyranitar V, 230 HP, beautiful Pokemon. Two attacks here, one dark, two colorless. Craglanch for 60 damage. Discard the top two cards of your opponent's deck. And Single Strike Crush, 240 damage for two dark, two colorless. Discard the top four cards of your deck. Yeah, bit of a double-edged sword in that one, but it hits for very big numbers, and 240 isn't the limit. We'll talk about that in a minute. Other than that, you are using Yveltal. Yveltal is 130 HP, Darkness Pokemon, has two attacks, Dark Cutter, 50 damage for two Dark Energy, and Single Strike Wings for 110 damage for three Energy. It's a nice weakness attacker into Gardevoir, into Mew. It's got a few different applications, and it's just a very powerful single prize Pokemon by itself. On top of that, for more weakness on an Arceus, for example, we have Stone Journey, 130 HP fighting type Pokemon, Lands Pulse, 30 plus damage for fighting and colorless. If a stadium is in play, this attack does 30 more damage, so you're doing 60 if you've got a Mesa Gozer in play, which you most likely have in this deck. And Giga Hammer, 120 damage for two fighting, one colorless. During your next turn, this Pokemon can't use Giga Hammer. Pretty much a one and done Pokemon at certain times, but it can be retreated and brought back. It can still use it. It's got ways and means of getting around this. So, before we get onto the support Pokemon, I have mentioned Special Energy and I've mentioned Single Strike Pokemon. This deck is built around Lugia V-Star, bringing up the Archeops, finding Special Energy to power up Tyranitar, Stone Journal, and Yveltal. So, what is making that so important? It is Single Strike Energy. This card can only be attached to a Single Strike Pokemon. If this card is attached to anything other than a Single Strike Pokemon, discard this card. And I will quickly point out, that does actually play into a tactic you can use with another item we'll talk about later. As long as this card is attached to a Pokemon, it provides fighting and dark energy, but provides only one energy at a time, and the attacks of the Pokemon this card is attached to do 20 more damage to your opponent's active Pokemon. So, 20 extra damage, fighting and or darkness. It's or darkness. <laughs> With two of those, Single Strike Crush is suddenly doing 280 damage, knocking out, I think, every V-Star in the format. Craglanch is doing 100 damage, knocking out quite a few basic Pokemon. And of course, you can add more onto that as well. Single Strike Crush can hit for up to 320 damage. Craglanch can hit for up to 140 damage. Had to think then. So you're starting to see where damage comes in, especially with weakness as well. It's very nice. Uh, Stone Jenner again. Giga Hammer doing 200 damage. Yveltal, potentially doing up to 190 damage. It's a very strong card. So, on top of that, we have a couple of support cards. We'll talk about this one, first of all, Squawkabilly EX. Uh, you're not not really using the attack, it is basic energy only. We are using Squawk and Seize. Once during your first turn, you may discard your hand and draw six cards. You can't use more than one Squawk and Seize ability during your turn. So, if you've got those two Archeops in hand, you've got a Nest Ball, grab your Squawkabilly, get rid of them with Squawk and Seize, your Archeops are already there in the discard pile, and you want those in ASAP. 
On top of that, we're running two Luminion V to find some of our more important supporters. Luminous Sign, when you play this Pokemon from your hand onto your bench during your turn, you may search your deck for a supporter card, reveal it, put it into your hand, then shuffle your deck. We all know what Luminion does, it's a fantastic little card. And on top of that, we're playing Radiant Serena, 140 HP. No worry about the attack, again, it is the ability we're looking at. Once during your turn, you may heal 20 damage from each of your Pokemon. 20 damage might not sound like a lot, but it is very helpful against Lost Box. With Archeops on the board, it's 150 damage. The tactic for Lost Box is Radiant Greninja for 90, and then hit them with Sableye for 60 on each, taking out both the Archeops. If you heal 20 HP off both of these Archeops, you've broken the maths, and at most they can only knock out one. It's a very good combination of cards. So, that's our Pokemon we were looking at. What else do we have in the deck? Well, I mentioned Luminion, so let me just jump to a support real quick. Uh, on the subject of discarding, Professor Burnett, search your deck for up to two cards and discard them, then shuffle your deck. So the I absolute ideal play for you is, even if you don't open Archeops, as long as you've got the Lugias, the ways to get the Lugias, grab your Professor Burnett with a Luminion, or if you've got it in hand, Play it down, get rid of the Archeops, bring them back up with Lugia V-Star. It's a very, very nice combination. Pokemon Search, it's always the first thing we talk about. We've got two Nest Balls, two Ultra Balls. Search your deck for a basic Pokemon, put it onto your bench, then shuffle your deck and Ultra Ball. You can use this card only if you discard two other cards from your hand. Search your deck for a Pokemon, reveal it, put it into your hand, then shuffle your deck. We also run Capturing Aroma for more item search. It is not a reliable item search, it is a pain in the ass, but... We have to use it. Capturing Aroma, flip a coin. If heads, search your deck for an evolution Pokemon, reveal it, put it into your hand. If tails, search your deck for a basic Pokemon, reveal it, put it into your hand, then shuffle your deck. If you rely on this card to get going, it's guaranteed not to flip the coin you need. <laughs> it's guaranteed. It's so annoying. Again, a quick jump to another card. Uh, for more Pokemon search, we've got Mesagoza. Once again, a coin flip. Once you're in each player's turn, that player may flip a coin. If heads, that player searches their deck for a Pokemon, reveals it, puts it into their hand, then that player shuffles their deck. This isn't a, it doesn't matter if it's heads or tails, you can find a Pokemon of some description. This is, it has to be heads. So yeah, a lot of coin flips on this deck. It's uh. Not the best, not the best. The other stadium we're playing is Collapse Stadium. Each player can't have more than four bench Pokemon. If a player has five or more bench Pokemon, they discard bench Pokemon until they have four Pokemon on the bench. The player who played this card discards first. If more than one effect changes the number of bench Pokemon allowed, use the smaller number, which is always interesting. I, I don't know if that has been a standard for ages, but it doesn't matter. Basically, what you want to try and do, if you've had to use Squawkabilly or you've had to use Luminion, Fill out your bench, collapse stadium, and then you can discard one of the cards. You get rid of the Luminion. It's a two-price paperweight, basically, sitting on your bench. It does need to go. As far as other cards are concerned, we're going to play one other item card. That is Urn of Vitality. Shuffle up to two single strike energy cards from your discard pile into your deck. If Pokemon with all of your single strike energy gets knocked out, Urn of Vitality, bring them up, power up the next one. It's a lovely little combination there. And it's good if you've had to get rid of them early as well, using a Squawk Ability or Professor's Research or something like that. So it does come up a fair bit. On to supporters, we've got Boss's Orders. Switch in one of your opponent's bench Pokemon to the active spot. You want to be picking your knockouts? That's the way to do it. Three, Iono. Each player shuffles their hand and puts it onto the bottom of their deck. If either player puts any cards on the bottom of their deck in this way, each player draws a card for each of the remaining prize cards. We all know Iono. We all love Iono. Mention Burnett already and Professor's Research. Discard your hand and draw seven cards. Another way to get rid of those Archeops and get your game plan going. So we've already talked about Single Strike Energy. What other energy is in this deck? Double Turbo Energy. As long as this energy is attached to a Pokemon, it provides two colorless energy. The attacks of the Pokemon this card is attached to do 20 less damage to your opponent's Pokemon. So this is a cheap way to power up Lugia if you do need to use it to attack. But do bear in mind, one of these brings its attack down to 200. A lot of Pokemon V out there were 210, 220, so... Sometimes you want to avoid using the double turbos if you can help it. Gift energy. There's not a lot of draw in this deck. This is quite helpful. As long as this card is attached to a Pokemon, it provides colorless energy. If the Pokemon this card is attached to is knocked out by damage from an attack from your opponent's Pokemon, draw cards until they have seven in their hand. So it's effectively the draw power of a professor's research with no hand. It's very nice to have. Jet Energy, a uh, lovely card, we've talked about this before. As long as this card is attached to a Pokemon, it provides colorless energy. When you attach this card from your hand to one of your bench Pokemon, switch that Pokemon with your active Pokemon. It just helps move stuff around. If Lugia is damaged, you probably don't want it to go down. Jet Energy onto your Tyranitar, bring it up, power it up, start taking knockouts. Finally, V-Guard Energy, as long as this card is attached to a Pokemon, it provides colorless energy. The Pokemon this card is attached to takes 30 less damage from attacks from your opponent's Pokemon V after applying Witness and Resistance. 
This effect can't be applied more than once at a time to the same Pokemon. It's a very nice card to have because Lugia, while it has 280 health, is hit for weakness, so you can kind of reduce a bit of the deficit there. Tyranitar being a 230 Pokemon, bringing it up effectively against these, the 260, just gives it a bit more survivability. So this is a very basic list, and I could, I, if anybody who plays Single Strike Lugia is watching this, they're already going, uh, there is like two or three cards that you should be playing in this that aren't in this deck, where are they? You do have to do a bit of juggling to make room for these Pokemon, but there are a couple of very good additions to this deck. First of all, you have Single Strike Urshifu VMAX, don't forget the V. Uh, beat down for 100 damage isn't the one you're looking for, GMAX 1 blow for 270 Free fighting energy, one colorless. Discard all energy from this Pokemon. This attack's damage isn't affected by any effects on your opponent's active Pokemon. As you know, the fighting energy cost is covered by single strike energy, using three of those for 60 extra damage. You're hitting for 330 damage bang on. What Pokemon in the format has 330 health and also has an ability that says this Pokemon can't be hurt by Pokemon with a special energy attached? Duraldon VMAX. It is the perfect Duraldon VMAX counter. The deck does not have any answers other than this one to Duraldon VMAX. So with it running around in the format currently at the time of this video, it's probably worth an inclusion right now. Of course, some people prefer to fight fire with fire and that's where Duraldon VMAX comes in. It's a single strike Pokemon, baby. You can play it yourself. Ability Skyscraper. Prevent all damage done to this Pokemon by attacks from your opponent's Pokemon that have any special energy attached. Which might not come up too much maybe in the mirror match, but it does help against Mew, for example, or a reversal Gardevoir maybe. But the main attack you're looking at is G-Max Pulverization, 1 Fighting, 2 Steel, 220 hit damage. This attack's damage isn't affected by any effects on your opponent's active Pokemon. So the only issue with this Pokemon, the Shred is nice, but the only issue with this Pokemon is 1 Fighting Energy, that's fulfilled by Single Strike Energy. With the previous deck list, you have no way to fulfill that metal energy cost, so you will have to get some impact energy in there at the cost of something else. So, honestly, I think Urshifu is probably a better bet, but people have tried to make Duraludon work. It's an interesting idea. So, that's it for Single Strike Lugia. It's a fairly simple deck. I do find, like, Lugia decks are, once they're set up, quite easy to run. It's very much a case of just, like, keeping an eye on energy counts. One of the things I was always uh, just a nightmare with, especially early on playing Lugia, was just, like, draining my energy and going... I've got two left and I can't do anything. This sucks. The main thing with Lugia is make sure you're keeping an eye on your energy count. Anytime you can like search for your deck with a nest ball or anything, just take the time to just go, yep, I've got two of those, three of those. Just make sure you've always got enough to do what you need to do to finish the game. So that's it, guys. Thank you very much for watching as always. If there's anything that I've missed, please let me know in the comments and I will highlight them. But until the next one, all my social media links are in the description below and I'll see you in the next one. See ya.